All right, what's up, animators? So today I'm going to show you how to make um, this classic tween with some audio and use these buttons as audio. Let me show you here a quick preview. All right, got some theme music in the background, and then I can click on this and I'll get a curl sound. And I'm going to get a howl over here. Cool, nice spooky forest scene. And there we go. Kind of looks like an eye. All right, <clears throat> so let's get started. Uh, so you can see here I have three layers. One has the music, another one is for the background that's seen back there, another one is for the buttons. So let's first get started with our theme music. So I'm gonna go and download a song from the YouTube Audio Library. So these songs are free to use. Depending on the song, you might have to give credit to the person that, uh, person or people that made the song. But just go to youtube.com forward slash audio library forward slash music and you can access this site here. You, all you need is your Google or um, YouTube account. Same thing. You, Google owns YouTube. You can use these filters here to filter out your music. So for mood, let's go with dark. Uh, something spooky, something scary. Genre, I'm going to go with the uh, ambient right here. Get a nice scary ambiance. And then you can play the music. Play buttons on the left. You can hear it. That one looks, sounds pretty sad. There's the name of the artist. That's the one I'm using in that other video. Let's check this one out. So this one, you have to uh, credit to the creator. I'm just making a video for personal purposes, a quick animation. Um, you don't have to do this, but if you are going to post it on social media, then you would have to uh, give credit to the original artist there. You are free. You can also go and jump in. All right, we already got downloaded some already, but um, whenever you find one that you like, just click this download button right over here, and it'll download your computer. Uh, by default, usually it'll just go straight to your uh, downloads folder. I downloaded that one before, so I'll probably use this one. All right, so after you download it, go back on over to Animate, and then go to File, Import, Import to stage. So we're going to bring it here into the stage. Import to stage. And choose your song. So here I got some songs here. Beyond the low. Open. Cool. And it's there. You can't see it, but it's there. Uh, you can see it up here in the keyframe. Sorry, just, just a regular frame. Make my frames bigger. There's a little sound wave there. You should get an orange line once you import it successfully. Uh, let me pull this out. Let me uh, pull this all the way over to frame 500. Frame 500, just hold it down the left mouse button on this bar and looking for 500. Here it is, I'm gonna keyframe here. That way um, I'll get more of the song. Right click, enter keyframe. There you go, 30 frames per second, 500 divided by 30. That's how many seconds I'll get on the song. All right, so I'm gonna go to the first frame. I'll click this button right here. It takes me to the first frame. I'm gonna hit the play button so I can hear my song. So my song's coming in there, so it starts out a little slow, but there it is. All right. If I click on this button, it takes me to my last frame. And then this button takes me over to my first frame. All right, so I'm going to lock this layer up. I'm going to give it a name, lock, and then double click right here on layer one. Theme music, theme underscore music. There we go. It's locked up. That's done. Now I'm going to add a new layer, plus sign right here. And this one's going to be my background. So I'm going to double click in there, background. That's going to be the, um, the scene in the back here, the forest. All right, so make sure you're on frame one. We're going to bring in a picture. When you bring it in, make sure you bring it in frame one. If not, if you're in another frame over here, then your picture's going to come out in that frame and the, in every frame after that, not in the previous frames. You would have to readjust your frame. So to save you time, uh, save you some headaches, just go to frame one and then look for your picture. And you're going to paste it in frame one for that background layer. All right. So for free pictures, I use pexels.com. Free to use picture, uh, pictures. Let me to go to pexels.com over here. Pexels.com. Here we go. This is pexels.com. I usually got like a theme going on, looking like pink right now. Skin tones. All right. So now I'm going to search for forest. There's also videos here um, if you're in a video editing class. 
I uh, want to look for a scary forest. If you notice here in my other uh, project, I have this tall picture. So the height here is uh, pretty tall. So when you can try and preview it, I'm going to get these black bars. I have to readjust this window so you don't see them. So that's not the stage because I adjusted the picture to the stage, but it gives me um, a preview of the stage there. So if I get a long one, I'll be less likely to experience it. So I can get a picture like this one. See, this one um, has a wider width right here. If I get a wider picture, but this one doesn't look that scary. I'd have to go and edit it to make it look darker. This one looks kind of scary. It's long right there. And if I keep going down, I'll find that other picture I have in that other file. See this tall one right here? That's cool, but it's not going to come out very well when I preview with Control Enter the Swift file. That's the one I was using in the other one. And I think that's this one right over here. There we go, yeah. So this one has a good width. So once you find one that you like, you can just left click it to select it. Uh, you can download it. Scroll down. Where's the download button? No, oh, there it is. Free download. You can download it. And you got to import it into Adobe Animate. So what I do, I just copy and paste it. And you can verify here if it's free to use. Uh, here's a creator. You can give them credit. Sometimes they'll have their information down there too. This will be a better quality picture. But it's just an animation, so I'm not going for actual video. So I'm just going to copy it, right click, copy image. Uh, the quality of that image is most likely not going to be as good as a download, but like I said, it's just uh, an animation. All right, make sure on frame one, click it there just to make sure frame one. And it tells you right here what frame you are as well. See, frame 11. So you got frame one, frame one. All right, control V paste. Cool, there it is, humongous picture. There's, I can see my stage there. I see the outline of the stage. Let me zoom out. Let me try 50%. All right. So I'm going to use a free transform tool right here. I'm going to scale it down a bit. I'm going to go to this corner handle, hold on shift, and just bring it down to about the same size as the stage. I guess it could be a little bit bigger. Let's see. There you go. So the, um, <clears throat> the dimension, the resolution is obviously slightly different. That's okay. I can keep playing around with this. I can line it up exactly the same size as the stage. But then what would happen, I'll distort my image. So as you can see here, here's the bottom edge of the stage, is the top edge. And for me to line it up, I'm going to lose some uh, some quality there. See, now I got kind of squished up. I don't want to do that. <clears throat> so instead, what I can do, I can change the resolution of the stage to match the resolution of the picture. And I'm going to do that by going here to the Properties panel. Click on Dock for your document. And then click on Match Contents. And your stage will match the, uh, the resolution here of your picture. You can see it right here, 1280 by 720. I'm going to click Match Contents, and it's going to match the ones on the, um, on the picture, and it'll be directly behind it. Match Contents. Boom, 1266 by 844, and now the stage is directly behind my picture. All right. So that was done in frame one, and it goes all the way over to frame 500. All right, so what I want to do now is um, I want to create a classic tween. So before you create a classic tween, you want to convert your object that's tweening into a symbol, symbol, a graphic symbol. All right, frame one. So I'm going to right click it, convert to symbol. You can also hit F8 right there. All right, and the name of this, I'm just going to name it background or forest. I'm going to go with forest for type. It's got to be a graphic. I'm using a classic tween, so graphic. There we go. Center registration. And then OK. All right, there we go. So now it's a symbol. Now I'm going to go over to the last frame. I'm going to click on this button right here. It takes me to the last frame. It should take me to the last frame. Select this. And it's not going. All right. Be like that. Let me just go over here to 500. Cool, 500. <clears throat> All right, so from frame one to 500, nothing's going on. So I want a key event here. I want this to kind of zoom in, like that effect that I got over here. Like I'm walking into the forest. So I do just the image, like I'm zooming into it. All right, so at frame 500, I'm gonna be zoomed in. So that means I gotta insert a keyframe right here for the new post, new position, new key event. So frame 500 for a background, right click, insert keyframe. Cool, there we go. And now using the free transform tool, I'm gonna to hold down shift and then left click on one of these um, handles here and just pull it out. And if you pull it out a lot, it's gonna be like super fast, right? So it's like a slow, steady uh, walk into that forest. All right, I guess that looks cool. All right, now to add the, uh, the tween. Notice I uh, scaled it up at frame 500, key event, and everything before that is still in the original pose. 
And now I'm going to right click anywhere between frame one and 499. Create classic twin. All right. Let me go to frame one. Play button. There we go. Pause that. Control enter. There you go. So now the windows and all the black bars on the side. Because I went with this picture with the a wider width here. It does look kind of creepy. All right. Could be a serial killer in those woods right there. <laughs> cool. All right. I like that. All right. So I'm going to lock that layer up. And now I'll make my buttons so I can get a crow, crow sound in the background and a howling wolf. All right. Plus sign here. And I'm going to call this layer buttons. Double click in there. Buttons. All right. Enter. Back over to frame one. So once again, frame one. So whenever you're making stuff, you want it present throughout your whole animation. Try to start out at frame one. If I start at a future frame, they don't just magically appear at that future frame there. All right. So let me uh, create my buttons. So I want to make a text button. I'm just going to add text in here. If I click on that text, then it'll make a sound or something. All right. Well, it will definitely make a sound. That's what I want to do. So I'm going to click on the text tool right here. I locked up the other two layers, so I don't accidentally mess them up. This is all in the new layer, frame one. Text tool, and just drag select there. Sorry, uh, just create a drag selection box there, a drag box. And I guess I can make this one crow. Caps lock. All right, looking a little, uh, then like that. So let me pull this out. There we go. And let's see if I can try to adjust it. I don't think I'll be able to. Nope, I'll adjust it later. So I got the crow there. Uh, you can go with whatever font you like. But if you want to change the font, let me hit Control A. Hit Control A. Go over here to the Properties panel. Make sure it's Object. And then you can go right in here, and you can choose a different font. So I'm going Time Zero Roman. I think it looks kind of scarier, kind of like the Tombstone. Tombstone font. Uh, you can go with something without serifs, something a little cleaner, something like that. But I don't think that one looks that scary, as scary as a Time Zero Roman. So that's why I'm going with Time Zero Roman. There's other examples here. Let's see this one. Treble shite. No, times you Roman all day. There we go, times you Roman. And then you can center line here. You can change the color of the text right here. So I'm gonna leave mine uh, as white. That way it stands out from the, from the rest. <clears throat> I can drag it down here. I can try making it gray. If I make it black, it's gonna blend in. There's a lot of black and there's a lot of dark colors. All right, so I'm gonna go to selection tool here. I got the selection tool now. And I'm gonna drag it down in here, put it in this corner. If I want to make it smaller, I can use the uh, free transform tool, hold on the shift key, and just scale it down a bit. And there it is. Maybe I want to put it over here in the center, up top, wherever, wherever you guys want to put it. It's not going to get tween, so it's not going to move from that whatever space you want to put it at. So this time I'll put it up top. The other one I had at the bottom, so I'll put it there. And then maybe I'll put the owl in there. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do both there, like a row. Text tool. And another drag selection box there. It's okay if I overlap it. I'm going to move it later. This will be wolf. Oops. Caps lock. Wolf. All right. Pull this out. There we go. Control A. I can make these changes. Um, but it's already kind of remember the last thing you did. So it's going to follow the same thing. It's going to have the same settings as the previous text. Selection tool. Bring it down over here. Free transform tool. Corner handle here. Hold on the shift key and scale it down. Let's see, be about the same size, just freehanding it here. Oops, moving something else. Let's see, so it tells me here the size of it. Eh, a little bit off, whatever. Let's see. So that one was uh, 1040 on the W. So let's see, 1040 here. There you go for the position. Here's the size 210, 194. I'll make this one 194 right here. 194. There you go. I'll take that. All right. So now we're going to make them buttons. So to make these buttons, just going to click on one here, right click it, and convert to symbol. So a button is a symbol. You've got to change the type here from graphic. Two button. There we go. Give it a name. 
uh, which was out of the crow. So I'm going to call this one crow. And then uppercase the whole thing, caps lock, crow, type button, center registration. Okay. And very important to name the instance right here. Also going to be called crow. There we go. And now we'll do the same thing for the other one. Right click that one. Let's see, there we go. I had to right click a couple times because it wasn't, wasn't selected. Convert to symbol, button, and this will be wolf, uppercase. Just keeping the same name because it's consistency here. Okay. And wolf right here as well in the instance. Oh, wolf. There we go. Cool. All right. So now I'm going to take these to edit, uh, editing mode. I'm going to double click Crow right here. Notice my timeline is now different. These are the different states of the button, different phases. So up button, up position, over when I hover my mouse over it, the down when I hit, when I, when the button is down and hit after I've hit it. So I'm going to right click here, enter keyframe. That way these um, also have states here. Oop, undo. Keyframe, keyframe. Here we go. Enter keyframe, enter keyframe, enter keyframe. I'm making these keyframes. That way um, I can change the color of them. So if I go to over, it'll be, um, I can change the color of the text here. So it's a different color when I hover over it and go to object. I can change the color there. Down position, I can change the color there. Let me go to object. Make sure it's down. And I can change the color here if, um, if I hit the button. So I can make it uh, red or orange, a different color, gray. I guess I could try making it gray. So I want it to stand out from the background. So with this orange color right here. All right. And then also when I hit down, I wanted to play a sound. I wanted to make a crow sound. So I got to get my audio. So for the sound effects, I'm going to go right here to freesound.org. It's not free sounds. You know, I would think it's free sounds. I've uh, went to freesounds.org a few times myself, but that's the wrong site. It's just freesound.org. And then you're going to register over here, create an account if you never use freesound.org. And then search for your sound here, Crow. There we go. And now I'm going to click on this filter here, Creative Commons Zero. That way I don't have to worry about giving any attribution credits to anybody. And it's free for me to use Creative Commons Zero. All right, CC by zero. And I don't want to go with this long one, this one minute one. Because if I hit that button, it's going to make this Crow sound for a whole minute. And you didn't even start out right away. There you go. And there's just a crow sound here and there. So I'm going to go with something shorter. See, this one's less than a second. That one's good. Maybe at the most, um, I go with five seconds at the most. Let's try this one for three seconds. Not bad. Rooster, that's not a crow. This one through here is 11 second one. That's a little too long for me. Let me try something that I, I tried this one earlier, right? No, I haven't tried that one. That's the rooster. This one was cool. So I'm gonna use that one. I think it was a three second long animation. So I'm gonna click on it right here. And then just click on download. Yeah, three second animation. All right. So I'll try to choose one that's five seconds or less. Anything longer than that is just not gonna be much of a sound bite. It's like a whole long audio file. And I'm gonna search for a how, a wolf. All right, Creative Commons. There we go. If you use this search engine, uh, this search bar here, instead of this one, then you would probably already have the uh, Creative Commons filter there. All right, five seconds here. That one's good. Here's one less than a second. That one sounds horrible. Don't even sound like a wolf. It's like a robot wolf, a cat. You can use a cat one too. You can still change your text, make it a cat, or add another button for the cat audio. Video game how it's probably, probably going to sound bad. Yeah, female Great Dane. There you go. That was obviously a dog, not not a wolf. Yeah. That one's cool. Sounds scary. Howling. And click on download there. So thank you, Phonos UPF. All right, so that's going over the downloads folder. Back to animate. Here I am. All right, so I want to bring in my audio files into animate. File. Import. I'm going to bring it into the library. So it's going to go to the library. That way it's not immediately here. Uh, this way I can choose where I want it to go. So I'm going to the library first, and then I'll drag it out of there. All right, so it, uh, by default, went over my downloads folder. That's where my files are at. And you can bring in more than one file at a time. See, I'm going to click this one. Hold on, Shift, click this one. There you go. So I got both of them. I'm going to bring in them both, bring them uh, both at the same time. Open. 
cool. And now they're in my library. So I'm going to click on my library here to verify. There's my picture. Uh, it's my forest. The same file. There is my uh, crow and my wolf and my two sounds. All right. I brought them in. Make sure you have your down uh, state here selected, your frame. You're going to go over here to the properties panel. If you selected the frame, then you should get the frame uh, tab here. Or notice this sound right here. Cool. Name. You're going to pick your file there. Crow. So one of these was for the crow. Sound right there. Crow. All right. And then for effect, you can have it uh, fade in, fade out. I don't need that. For sync, you're going to want to go with stream. Sorry, you're going to want to go with start. Click on start. For sync, you want, it to hit, you want it to be start. So when you hit that button, it'll start that sound. So let me test that out. So that should be good. I'll go back over here. Control enter. Turns that orange color when I click it. I hit a chosen or down frame. Cool. So I haven't done anything with the wolf yet. So let's make uh let's finish this button here. Alright, so I'm gonna double click it and just kind of keyframe all these frames here. Enter keyframe, keyframe for the different phases of the button, keyframe. Alright, back to the down frame. And I'll just change the color here of my uh, my text. I'm gonna go over here to object. And then for the fill, and I think it was this orange color I went with right here. All right, back over to frame, still in the down frame. And then for sound in here, name, it's going to be howling, that other sound effect. Uh, sync, let's go start, start, that way it starts the sound. So these are the commands for my, uh, my button here. So back over to the main frame, back to the main timeline, sorry. All right, there you go, control enter. Save this file, save as. Let's see. Audio buttons or there you go, just audio buttons. AA. Dot FLA file, that way you can always go back and edit this. Open an enemy, save. I'm exporting this as a Swift file so I can use those buttons. Export. Export movie. All right, so uh, I can leave it with the same name or I can change it, but make sure it's a Swift file, SWF, and then save. And then next time you open it, open a, it'll open an anime and you can use those buttons. You can also use that Swift file in uh, Dreamweaver. Cool, so that's it. Thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. Give a like, comment, subscribe, anything else. <laughs> Send the wolves to your house. Just kidding, I, I don't have those type of powers and abilities. My mutant power is uh, being tall. Take care.